Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference Well YouTube channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day like me and if not, I hope you're manifesting, planning and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all. Yeah? So, getting right into it you guys. This vlog, it's been a minute since I've uploaded uh, one of my interviews. I'm very excited to be sharing with you all an audio interview um, that I've done back in what was this, June of this year, earlier around Juneteenth actually, uh, with the lovely Don Williams, uh, excuse me, I, got the, I believe it's her name correctly, I want to make sure I say her name correctly, Miss Don, <laughs> put some respect on it, uh, her podcast, the research show, the, excuse me, the research shows podcast, try saying that three times fast, um, and uh, we did this interview back in June and we had a very good time, you know, talking about me, getting to know me and my business and my book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. And, you know, talking with this young lady and just sharing, you know, our thoughts about so many things and so many topics. And so without further ado, uh, let's get. So here it is. Check it out. My interview, my audio interview I did back in June with the lovely Don of the Research Shows podcast. <laughs> and check it out. And when we come back on, uh, I'll hit you a little bit more what's going on in Difference World. So here it is. Bing. Everybody, this is your girl Don Williams. You are listening to Research Shows podcast. Today we have Different. I love that name. That is so different. <laughs> How you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, Queen. How you doing, Miss Dunn? Thank you so much for having me on your show. Shout out to everybody out there listening. What's up? It should go different. Yes, that's my name, different. Spelled D I F E R N T. <laughs> um, yeah, just, let's get it. Happy to be here. Yes, I love it. Everything just is so different. The way she spelled her business thing. Oh, I was supposed to introduce her as, I'm sorry, author, no, it's motivational not. speaker, CEO of Third Eye Entertainment LLC. And the way she spells Third Eye is just so unique i love this so we're gonna kick this off by you telling us explain your um the way you spell third eye differently what's the purpose of it and um, sp um what's the purpose of spreading what are you trying to spread awareness about with the name of oh. your Okay, well, I'll give you a little background about myself and my business as well. So, again, my name is Different, everybody. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 31 years old. I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, motivate, and entertain all at once. Are you want me to keep going? <laughs> yes, please, go ahead. Go you want me to keep going? Okay, yeah, okay. I can talk a lot, girl. Yeah. Okay, okay. Look, don't let yeah, me stop you. Okay. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Well, continuing on. Okay, so with my business, Third Eye Entertainment, like I said, uh, Don, we strive to bring social awareness to society, and we talk about societal issues that are often swept under the rug or people like to turn a blind eye to issues such as injustice, systemic racism, mental health awareness, suicide prevention, domestic violence, sex, child sex trafficking, gun violence, uh, any other, you know, LGBTQ uh, rights, you know, any issue that people like to turn a blind eye to, you know, we attempt to bring it to light to push that envelope for people to have these conversations that need to be had. Um, and over time, it's my hope and prayer that when we have these conversations constantly and, and consistently, then we can create systemic change. Um, you asked how uh, my my name, I, yes, I did spell it differently. Uh, as far as my business is spelled T-H, the number three, R-D, and, you know, E-Y-E. Uh, so it's just basically Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. Um, the name stems from, you know, a part of who I am. And I'm, I'm real big on to, uh, to chakra healing and meditation, as well as astral projection. And so... Um, I, I, every a week or two or three days, I do a, a chakra cleansing. And so one of the main chakras that I, I, I'm in tune with or love to be in tune with is my third eye chakra. Uh, that's uh, some would call the sixth sense or your, your self-consciousness. Um, when, you know, you, you have your, your heart and your mind in tune with one another, you're able to see, you know, your judgments better, so better make better judgments, if you will. Um, with your third eye, so <clears throat> that's what third oh, eye came right. from. 
<laughs> that yes. was so deep. So you just opened up a whole nother can of worms on questions I'm about <laughs> to ask. So before we even get into that, look, before we even get into that, we're going to take a commercial break. So everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. So first of all, when you said astral projection, I'm thinking of that movie on Netflix that just captivated me. You, do you know which one I'm talking about? With the black no, lady? Oh my gosh, it was just, okay, so it was like, tell me, is this astral projection? The lady was like, um, it was kind of like she was having some type of affair with, with who she thought was this man, but really uh, the man had been, I guess, the spirit had moved into him. It's, it's weird. Like, it's kind of like they're dreaming, but it's like the soul is going through outer space. It's some... I want you to explain to people what the heck is astral projection. <laughs> so in layman terms, is astral projection is also known as an outer body experience. Basically, when your soul detaches from your body, but you're still basically alive. A lot of times it doesn't happen until after you die. But um, it goes back to thousands of years, you know, um, people, you know, who are spiritually in tune are, who are, are turned on into the spiritual realm, if you will. Uh, they're able to project themselves spiritually outside of their bodies and go anywhere they please and actually see things and, and can't feel or do, but it's just as if you are doing so. It takes heavy, heavy, heavy meditation. It takes a long time to achieve. I haven't achieved it. Uh, and so I, um, and, and, and uh, true believers and people who have an open mind. And so those who are interested, I actually just did a, a vlog on my YouTube about astro, when I asked you about, you know, chakra healing and what's chakras. And so for those who are interested, I encourage you guys to go and check out my uh, YouTube channel and subscribe to that as well. And uh, just learn that way. You know, my tagline is come and learn. So come and learn. Um, as well as I, I also encourage people to do their own research and find out what works for them and what their liking because what works for me may not necessarily work for you guys or anybody out there listening um so i'm just touching the tip of it is basically astral projection is just an out of body experience if you want to know more then you go to my uh, youtube channel you learn and then you do your own research <laughs> yeah um, that's how that's how it was in that movie where it was like it was like what you were saying so what you're saying is most of the time it happens once people pass it doesn't necessarily happen while they're in this um realm yeah, but unless you you you've actually you know trained your body and you 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 practiced it, it takes years to achieve. I did it one time when I was meditating and I felt my my tip of my head or my 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 soul detached from mm -hmm. from the top of my head to like it's, it was detaching, but I got freaked and I'm like what? And I haven't been able to achieve it since. And so you have to fully oh, trust your body. You have to clear up your mind. You have to. It's just, it's important to meditate. Get in, get in, get into meditating and cleaning your chakras before you try to get into astral projection. So it's steps to it. Um, learning about chakra healing is what led me to astral projection. Um, I actually the bug was planted a, a long time ago when I was overseas. I got an opportunity to study abroad in uh, South Korea at Kim Young University, and I had a guy friend there who actually turned me on. Our, our um, put the bug in my ear about chakra here he believed in uh, energy transfers like he didn't believe um like like you would necessarily go to heaven and stuff but once you die you would transcend into your your animality you would turn into your animal spirit and so that's kind of what opened up the door to like what what are you talking about and so i would you know i didn't dismiss it luckily i'm an open-minded person so i didn't dismiss what he was saying i just you know took me a little, a little hour long to get you know into it about what he was saying but that's what was sparked it, my interest in it, you know, 10 years ago. But I just actually got serious and, and open about it about two years ago, um, coming up in a deep fried South <laughs> where I'm in Texas. Um, a lot of the times when you, you, know, you talk about these things or, you know, the spiritual realm or, 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 or astral projection or, or uh, chakra healings or anything of that sort, they automatically revert to, you know, voodoo or spiritual wickedness or putting spells on people. Um, I don't dismiss that. I'm not, I don't, like I said, I'm open-minded and I try to respect everybody's belief, but I'm not into that. However, just coming up in the South, if you were to tell somebody, oh, you believe in spirits or if you believe in, you know, chakra ears or astral projection, they automatically assume like you went to witchcraft and stuff. 
And so for so long, I would just keep that, you know, inside and just didn't talk about it. But as I've gotten older and moved on into my 30s, I'm starting to care less and less of what people think and just live my life and live my truth and be happy with it. You know, this is my truth and I'm not going to hide it. And so, so, uh, so it doesn't necessarily it, deal with uh, witchcraft. No, absolutely not. Um, okay. Again, that's why you have to do your own research. You have to get mm-hmm. into it and find out, you know, what it's about. Uh, it has nothing. I, I don't. I don't. I stay in the light. I'm all about, you know, attracting goodness. And and I believe in karma. What you put out into the world, it comes back to you. So. I don't play with none of that, you know, doing that, that spiritual wickedness and trying to put spells on people. In Louisiana, it's, in New Orleans especially, it's a very big thing, and it's not to be disrespected. Uh, and so um, you you just you don't, you don't, you know, down on it or anything down here, but you don't talk about it and, and such. A lot of people just, it's just, well, again, one of those issues that's swept under the rug. And so yeah. it's, and so but I'm talking about it and, and educating people, about, especially within the black community. It's, it's very, you know, that's a very big uh, thing down here in the South or Texas and Louisiana, especially with the black women in New Orleans or Louisiana. A lot of the times that they say or they, they believe or may possibly be into it full on, there are a lot of people who are open about it and, you know, kudos to them. But that having that, that stigma it plagued me for so long and not in keeping me shelled up and not being who I, I really am and truly am, you know, and I'm a person that believes in chakra healing and astral projection and then meditation. And so, um, that's who I am. And I'm, I'm not, I don't care what nobody thinks. <laughs> I'm trying to keep PG 13, but. <laughs> right. Cause after you get a certain age, it's okay, girl, if you got to cuss, I'll bleep it out. But once you okay. get a certain, <laughs> once you get a certain <laughs> age, um, you don't care because yeah, know, girl. You just my my just 20 and 18 years. I just wish I would have, girl. Trying to keep up it with just, the Joneses. I don't right. even know who they is. <laughs> right. It and comes so, with age. The older you get, oh, yeah. it just be like, what am I doing? Like you. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, you need to be happy. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. um, that's just what it is. So we're gonna go into um. There was a video I saw. It's, I'm so glad I didn't ask. It was the previous guy before you. I'm about to ask him. And I said, Lord have mercy, that wasn't even him. But you had this vicious, <laughs> this vicious video where I said, oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, lo- I love it. It, it was I wonderful. because that's thought-provoking. I love it I because think- it's like, yes, you went there, sister. You went there. And so my question is, well, first of all, I want you to tell the inspiration behind it. And also... I wanted to ask a hypothetical question, which is, what if most white Americans were fully aware of the social Hmm. injustices that you mentioned and simply just don't care? And how do you You address that? That's not a question. That's an actual statement. It's an actual thing. There's a lot of white people who acknowledge (laughs) and know that what they're doing (laughs) with racism is wrong, but don't care. Don't give a damn. So that's not a question. That's a true statement. Right. (laughs) Okay. But (laughs) But some people don't know this, though. Some people actually believe, some people really believe that they don't know. And they're, even in this day of information where you can research things, people actually believe, like, oh, no, they, they don't know they mean anything about it. Yes, they did. They know exactly yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to answer the first question, and I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I, ask, I have another uh, statement for that. Um, you asked what inspired the book. Um, I guess if we, if we don't ever pose, get off get off topic to it can lead to how it, it led to the book. In retrospect, getting my mental health in check led to me writing the book as well as starting my business. Now, again, like I said with Third Eye, we, we talk about the, one of the main issues is pushing for mental health wellness. Um, getting a little bit of my background, more depth. Uh, coming up, I had a pretty good childhood, but up until the time I was around 11, I had ended up homeless with me and my family, and it stayed that way for around three years, you know, living from flow to post sleeping in cars, shelters, parks, bus oh stops, even at a bus stop at one place. You name it, we, we did that for three years. And at the age of 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by one of my relatives, and the other family members didn't know where I was until about six months of me being into care. However, within that time, I would found out through another foster care that if you stayed, 
and aged out in the state of Texas, they pay for your full ride to college. And so right there, you know, a light bulb went up in my head and I had to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts. And so I had made that decision to, you know, do that those four years being in the system and going to foster home, foster home. And finally, by the age of 18, I had graduated from Elsick High School and I ended up going to San Houston State University. So shout out to the Bearcats. I, it was a blessing in disguise. I ended up getting my degree in international business. I had two minors in economics and business communication. A few years later, I got my master's degree in entrepreneurship, as well as I have, I was blessed with the opportunity to start my own student organization. It also planted the motivational speaking blood. Um, I had an organization titled Pay It For It Student Organization. Um, it was tailored to mentoring, volunteering, and educating the children in the system, as well as regular high school kids. On our education side, we would go to different high schools speaking with them about the importance of education, as well as I would share my testimony with them. And a lot of the times at the end of the, you know, the session, the kids would come to me and tell me, hey, I'm in that same situation, or I'm in foster care too. Or, I didn't know the state of Texas, you know, would pay for your tuition. So right there, you know, that inspired me and that showed me like, hey, I need to share my story and share my testimony. So many people out here like me that's going through the same thing that I just went through. I can use my what I went through and, and encourage them again. And so that's where that seed was planted. And so although, you know, my story may have started in, you know, trials and, and tribulations going to end in triumph. Um, when I graduated, had my degrees, had a lot of career opportunities coming my way. However, due to that background, how I came up, like I said, for me, growing up in that background, you know, moving from place to place, chaos was normal to me. I've seen a lot of things that a child at 11, 12 year old shouldn't have seen. And it just, it, it traveled all with me through, you know, high school and college, and even in foster care, getting shuffled from foster home to foster home, it did something to me. It made me feel, you know, hey, it's no use in me getting used to this. Lord and I, I was actually placed in really nice foster homes, and each one of them were black, you know, foster families, you know, had nice houses, were educated, went to college, had good jobs and cars, and so that showed me, you know, if you want something, you don't want to be successful or set in life, you need to go to school. Education is the key especially when you don't have no talents you like me, I didn't play no sports or anything. And so education was my, my key, uh, my, my way of my ticket up out of my situation. And so, um, with, with, with the foster homes, I felt in my mind, it was too good to be true. You know, I just come from this, it's, it's going to come to me and some, it's too good to be true. And so I would get that mentality of I'm the captain of this ship. You know, I decide when it's time for it to go down and seek. And so I would sabotage those relationships, get put out the foster homes, move on to the next. Um, you know, it, be, it, it was just, again, uh, mind you, I'm 14, 15, going through right. it. Learning myself, my body, I'm a teen. I still want to, you know, get out and do things, but can't because I'm not seen as a kid. I'm seen as a number, a case number mind you. And so that was just the trials and tribulations I went through and it carried with me through my adulthood to the point where I had, was given all these career opportunities and I was squandering them. And it was just one that sat with me for the longest time. I had a meeting with a well-connected person and I let those demons in the back of my head get to me, telling me, you know, hey, they just taking pity on you because you're a foster kid or you, you they not going to like you, you talk too fast, you too country, you too ghetto. All those words, you know, all those little, little thoughts that we all have to face, I let them get to me. And I purposely showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth and they didn't really want to work with me afterwards. And for the longest, I had sat on that, lost sleep over it, regretted it, couldn't move on from that and other situations that I had squandered. And so until one day I had woke up in my 30s, had been almost in my 30s and just had to look myself in the mirror and face that ugly truth and say, hey, whatever I went through as a child, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't in my control. But as an adult, it is my problem to fix. It's on me to go fix. And so I had to dismiss that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy, you know, coming up from that background, being taught what goes on in this house stays in this house. We don't talk about our issues. And so I said, bump that. This black girl is going to talk about her issues and going to go get her some help and talk with a therapist. And so that's what I did. And doing so, he encouraged me or they encouraged me to get back into one of my hobbies, which was writing and journaling. And mind you, I will 
Uh, I, before I had, um, I used to, I, I also travel. I'm a vivid travel. When I got to study abroad in uh, Korea, that planted my travel bug. While being over there, I got to travel to eight other countries. And fast forward to now, I had been to just about 50 countries. However, during the pandemic, that all stopped and came to an end. So I'm stuck in the house, can't do anything, can't go nowhere, depressed. And May 25th, 2020 happens the day George Floyd dies. Mind you, we're both from Houston. I'm from Fifth Ward. He's from Third Ward. Two neighborhoods next to each other. So um, when they were doing the protest and in his honor, I wanted to get involved. I wanted to have my voice heard. I even wanted my nephew to come to the protest so he could see what's you know going on. However, when it came down to it, I couldn't done because I thought you know a little deeper about it. I wanted my voice to be heard long after this protest is over with. I want my my voice to be heard long. After after I'm gone. So going home, talking with God, praying and meditating, getting spiritually in tone, asking for the spirit of the sermon. I asked him to show me what it is that I can do to make these people think, you know, share my talents with the world as well as what's going to put me on the map. I prayed a long time ago, you know, to let God for me to be the one in my family to break the generational curse and create generational wealth. And this is how it's going to be done. And so little by little, piece by piece, I would just sit in journal and write and ask questions, you know, what if, you know, George Floyd was a white man who died by the hands of a black police officer in paraphrasing form. And then you will see the illustrations of a race role reversal where you see a white man with a black police officer's knee on his neck. And so um, I started writing the manuscript in June 2020. And by December 2020, I was finished. I showed it to my lawyer. She read it. She gave it some high praises. And then she asked a question that reminded me that no matter how much you think you know, how many degrees you got under your belt, it still ain't enough. You still don't know shit. Sorry. <laughs> and, and so um, I had to hit the ground running when she asked me a question, well, what's the name of your business? And so I'm like, uh, this is my book. And it's, you know, it's my book. And she's like, I don't think you understand. You have to, uh, in order to sell a product, to the public, you have to have an LLC. And so had to hit the ground running, learning how to run a small business here in Texas. That wasn't my initial plan because I also am a real estate agent. So it was my plan to go off and do some real estate, which is still a, a part of my plan, but God has other plans for me as well. And mm-hmm. so um, March, 2021 is here. Third Eye Entertainment is born my LLC. And so with that being said, our first product that we have to uh, uh, offer to the public is my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Again, this book that was written to inform and encourage thought provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And this is done through graphic and provocative illustrations mm-hmm. as categorized in four main paradigm shifts. It has historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical paradigms. So, for instance, uh, in hypothetical, excuse me, historical paradigm, I asked one of the paradigm questions, and I have a list of them. So once you go to these chapters, these are actual, true, controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African-American community. I've done my research on this. I've provided re- references for those who want to go troll and do their own research. They can do that. Um, but these events are very true. They've happened. Nothing in this book is, is a lie. The only difference is it's just a race for reversal. It's happening to white folks instead of black. So that's what makes it a nonfiction fiction book. Um, so with hypo, excuse me, historical paradigm, I asked a question. I think you've seen it in the uh, the, par- the book trailer that, that you said it was, it was vicious with it or something, I think. Um, it asked the question, what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in illegal slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America. Mm-hmm. And then you will see the provocative illustration or the thought provoking <laughs> illustration, you know, of white slaves and shackles and chains. And then you have black slave traders, you know, manning them and having whips over them, the same as they did to us. And so it's basically, it's a book that's meant to make you think. It will definitely mm-hmm. ruffle some feathers and ring some bells, but the, the, the gist of the com, uh, the book is to get the conversation rolling, to to encourage thought-provoking conversations. Whether you like the book or not, you're still going to talk about it. So whether they're talking about it mm-hmm. good or bad, they're still talking about it. They're having the conversations, whether they know it or not. And mm-hmm. so um, it's also my hope and prayer that when we start have these conversations, like I said before, then over time we can create systemic change. 
And I'm full aware that, you know, change doesn't happen overnight, Don. And it doesn't just happen with one person pissing and moaning. It's going to take more than just black and white people coming together at the round table and talking. It's going to supposed to happen. It should happen on more than one occasion. It needs to, and it has to happen on more than one occasion. Um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I'm going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. How my husband says sometimes people don't respect nothing but an ass whooping, and <laughs> all you gotta do, and I mean that with every, I don't care who I offended just now, I do not care because all you gotta do is look in South Africa, and them Dutch white mm-hmm. South Africans is getting it. And my whole thing is, if you got any level of common sense as a white American, you will want to look at. I guess, I think that's Australia where they acknowledge that they were trifling and what they did to the indigenous people. It's better, you don't gotta apologize. Acknowledge exactly. that your ancestors were animalistic savages and yep, we could roll with it. But this whole thing of, it's no such thing as racism because that's what we, I just was talking to the guy prior to you about that. We went through that down here where I'm at in this racist county um, and you see it in the school system. You ain't going to see it with the neighbors. You ain't going to see it at the mm-hmm. store. But you're going to see in the school system how they indoctrinate these children early on so that they have this privilege. I didn't even know this existed because I grew up in an all-black area. I had no idea that they are mm-hmm. indoctrinated from from the moment they set foot in elementary school. Okay? Uh-huh. So my whole thing is, what you're saying, how I see it, this about to do a total 180, just like them people. Them people is living like savages in South Africa. Mm-hmm. They, they, I learned, and I, I'm, I homeschool. I learned that once apartheid happened, and then after when Nelson Mandela became president, and they promised mm-hmm. the white people, yeah, we're gonna have you know kumbaya, woo woo. I was just like, oh wow, honey. They totally flipped it on them people, and they made it so the white people was at the lower totem pole. Because let's just keep it real. I mean, I know I'm a millennial. My whole thing is, I'm going to get back. That's just gone. But these generations, they're off chain. <laughs> so they off chain. They don't even care. They, like, you think I don't give a F. Them generation Zers don't give a F. So what you're saying, I get it. I think that would be wonderful in a in a in a nice kind of world. But how these people going hard denying racism? They about to get it. Okay, oh, they about yeah. to get it. Well, but hold on now. I I must disclose this book because there's already some people out there saying it about this book, and it does. I got it all will be on the But uh, it does come with a disclaimer. It is intended for a mature audience only. And so yeah. if you can't take this, then don't even bother coming to this kitchen. But with yes. me done, I can't even front. I can't even lie and say, you know, I wouldn't push for equality because I have white people in my family. My grandmother is a white woman addicted to black men. <laughs> so okay. it's like that here in the South. And luckily, even though I grew up in the deep fried South, I grew up in Houston, uh, um, a melting pot. We have it all down here. And so in this, this little city in certain spots in, in, in Texas, we, we tolerant, you know, and so yeah. I can see both sides of the coin. So when I go outside of, you know, in the other parts of Texas, the West Texas, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got to, you know, they, they don't call them shoot them up Texas for no reason. But yes. I, I can see both sides of it, man. And just, and, and, and I, and working in the, I used to work for the census before the pandemic happened. And that's where I learned where change really does happen. You may not see it right off the bat, but I've seen it happen, man, and just in one part of me getting out and asking questions and, and people coming together and complaining about one issue, it did not happen overnight, but over time, it got the job done. So again, right. it's not going to take about one person pissing and moaning, me just putting this book out there and pissing people off. It's going to take you guys, my people, helping me spread this word. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I also, I, I also, and then I also want to say, even though this book it will piss off some people. It's not meant to be seen as a tool, as an uprising for the black community. It's an uprising right. against the white community. Stop that. Right. Yes. No, it's not. It's simply right. meant to make right. you think and put it in your face. And for those out there, especially those who like to turn a blind eye and want to sweep things under the rug, this is for you. You know, this is me yes. holding the mirror up to your face. And whether you like it or not. And so even, unfortunately, at the next protest that we'll have to have, of a, a death of an innocent, unarmed, you know, person, a victim, whether they be black, 
Hispanic, a, a minority, you know, we'll, we'll eventually it's going to come, unfortunately. I want them, people out there that are listening, you know, you have my permission, as long as you use the watermark illustrations, show them these illustrations at the protest, hold it up in their faces so they can't turn a blind eye to, to where they can't, you know, oh, look the other way. Make them see this, you know, share their opinion, you know, wear their ugly head, and then that's how you will see it. This, whether they want to acknowledge it or not is there. Others can see it. And, and one thing I, I want to, you know, apropos to get off topic, but still, one thing I learned about number 45 is you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. You know, within four years of being in office, this man, you know, by the time he got out, he caused all that ruckus. He still had 25% of the U.S. adult population done, still condoning and riding for his BS. That's 75 million plus people, girl, <laughs> still because, riding for this man. After he had been uh, uh, incited in, uh, in a riot, you know, refused to concede and done so many underhanded sneaky things. See, that's a whole that right there has before. to do with money too. That first of all, and and I can't, we can't even get to our last question. I'm gonna have to have I'm you sorry. back on because no, look, I'm gonna have to have you back on another day <laughs> because this is like deep, honey. But I just want to say touch on that in regards to Trump. That man could work some people. You hear me? Because he don't even like his supporters. He don't want to touch them. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He don't. He don't like you, but he will work your bank account. Then people in trailer parks paying their last. So I mean, it's kind of like I mean I don't mean to say like admire, but it's kind of like good God, what the heck is it in him that he's able to still work people like this at the that age of what you mentioned? Give you. Go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it, because there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to condone your BS. So that's what I learned from, 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 from 45. So with this that's book, true. no matter who don't like it, it's going to be somebody who understand like you done. You feel where I'm coming from. So that's why I go where I celebrate it, not where I'm tolerated. Now, yeah, yeah, also, yeah. with this book, who those who are mature enough to make it through the first uh, pet paradise, hypothetical, excuse me, historical, political, and precedent, and make it to hypothetical, you will see that it's not just about pissing off white people. I'm talking about coming together as one, taking accountability, acknowledgement, and coming up with ways that we can combat systemic racism and create systemic change. So it's not just about pissing off white people and rubbing it in their faces. Yes, we want you acknowledged. Yes, we want you to take accountability. But me personally, I, I'm I can't say I'm a Christian, but I do believe in a higher power. And so I believe in the power of forgiveness and moving on and not holding grudges. And so, yeah, I want to, you know, move on and, and, and not live in the past and remind y'all about Savior. I don't want to have to remember that every you know, time, although we can't forget. I don't want to live in the past. I want to move forward. Quite frankly, I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. I want to talk about systemic change. So what if, God? What if this is a generation that plans to see for the next? It might not happen for this generation. I don't think it will. I'm being a realist. I'm a realist. I don't think it'll happen for our generation. But what if we plan to see for the next gen or the next and the next? And then they children will see it. So our children and children won't have to go through what we have we've been through. Well, I, I and hope so, so now. Look, so I hope so even if it goes nowhere shoot. fast <laughs> even if it goes nowhere fast though, nothing beats a failure but a try. I can't they can't nobody yeah. say I didn't try. I tried. Yeah, so, I think it's it's yeah. a beautiful thing. As what you're doing is a beautiful thing, and I I really love it. And um, it's just, I guess people can be so discouraging and make you be like, "Girl, these people, Lord." Oh yeah, but I get discouraged every day. But when, but I look at that book and remind me, that's that's the reason why we gotta we gotta whether they want to see it or not, it's on us, you know, to make them see the truth. And once like it's out there, can't unring a bell. So, um, so well, I got people all over the seas learning the boy reading my book. And I'm like, they didn't, they're like, I didn't know this happened or this went on. George, you know, Washington stole or black people use black slaves teeth. A lot of people didn't yes, know that. So again, this book will yes. educate, it will inspire, and it will entertain you all at once. I even have, you know, I talk about number 45 in the book. I talk about real serious issues in these books, man, but it's also in an entertaining and a thought provoking way. Uh, and it's also a, 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 a for your feathers type of way, too. But hey, can't unring a bell. So it's it's done. This book has been out in about since uh, last year, September 21. Those who are interested, I definitely would appreciate your support. You can go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy. Much, much appreciated. You can also go to my website and you can see all my social media handles for my Facebook, 
Instagram, Twitter, especially my YouTube channel. I would love for you guys to go there, Difference World YouTube channel, and subscribe. There you can see me talking about all of my social awareness topics, as well as my travel vlog videos, me going all over the world and the places that I've been. I do post about that. So that's the entertainment side of it, as well as the food and cuisine, excuse me, and the culture experience. And so um, I want to thank you, Don, for having me on your show. I know you said it's only a certain amount of time, but I want to take up all your time. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get it in now. Um, okay, also, question, again, I did, if, if you have enough time, do you have one? Can you answer one more question for me? Or you got to go? I do. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I, I ain't got to go. But I just didn't want you to say, oh, we're out of time, and I didn't oh, get no, that no, in. No, I, I would have let you put your plug in, but it's cool. We're going to take a commercial oh, yeah. break. That's what I was trying to do. Let me take a commercial okay. break. We'll be right back. A collaboration with Line of Thought Podcast. 5.2 million settlement from Geico. It's the craziest thing I ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> it's like some technicality why she won that. Next they're going to start saying, hey, I, I got a, I got a STD in a hotel. Now I need to sue the <laughs> hotel chain. Right? I mean, they're, they're not being responsible enough. They're supposed to clean the sheets. Go in there with a black eye. <laughs> Geico fights woman claim for contracting H HPV after having sex in customer's car. How you how you supposed to know that's where she caught it? What if she did it with somebody else the night before at home? Geico should, he should look. Hey, he hey, on. I understand what you're saying, but tell that to Kobe. Kobe got to do with anything. What the Kobe? Oh wow, yeah. No, 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 no. Remember, no, remember, no. That girl has sex with three or four other men, but she claims Kobe. Same thing. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you right. have five different right. seeding right. things in her body. But yeah, that didn't have to do with Kobe. And that didn't go through. She didn't win exactly. that game. But this woman won. No, she won heavily, but she won. Hey, what you just heard was a clip from Line of Thought Podcast, which you can find at tinyurl.com forward slash line of thought. And me, I also collaborated by coming on this podcast. So anybody who is interested in collaborating with me, just go straight to the research departments dot com. Click on research shows podcast and you'll see the section for collaboration. So. Have a great day, and I hope you enjoy other episodes. All right, y'all, welcome back. This is the last question I want to ask you. Because <laughs> I had a whole yeah. rack of them. Let me see. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I feel like it's hard to see manipulation in any form what's currently happening. You know? What so, you like, you're, like, for example, what we just spoke up with Trump, where mm -hmm. his supporters will empty their bank account out while not even realizing that he can't stand them. Like, he don't want to touch them. He thinks they're beneath them. You see what I'm saying? Or, or like, maybe you're in an abusive relationship and that man whooping your hind parts, but you can't see that he really can't stand you. Even though he's saying, I love you, his actions is saying, I hate you. So when we look at this racism issue, right, People can't see it while they're in it. Even black people, they cannot see it while they're in it. That. Even with yes. Yeah, so why do you think that is? I want your opinion on that. I'm gonna have to think about this. I think it stems. It's it's because it's been it's been so it's it's been so normal for so long in these in this country for centuries. Racism is is is, is was normal to the point to where it's, it's it's second nature now. You know. To the point where it, they say how um, alcoholism can is a hereditary thing. I firmly believe passing on, you know, prejudice. I don't want to say racism because nobody really learns racism. It's taught, uh, or if you will, but prejudice and having that preconceived notion that somebody's bad that can be passed on, you know, from generation to generation. Even as a, a toddler, when they're when they're coming up, what they've been, you know, exposed to. For instance, uh, let's say. A young white boy who grew up with his grandmother in the South, uh, when they when he was little, when they would walk down the street, every time they would walk past a black person, she would clutch him, clutch her mm -hmm. purse. And so as he's grown up, he, you know, every time he walks by, you know, a black person, whether he knows them or not, he's clutching his phone, he's grabbing his wallet, mm -hmm. he's, you know, looking around, he's looking suspicious. To him, it doesn't seem racist because this is what he's been taught to be alert mm -hmm. about black people. But on the outside, other people, 
it's racism. So yeah, I can see that part necessarily. You know, it, it's just what they've been taught, what's been imbued in them. So it, it, and and it's on you know us as the millennials coming up to remind them and educate them, and 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 speak up and correct them every time. And those who are, who are non-colored but yet riding for us for us and screaming Black Lives Matter, especially those white people, use your white privilege to help us out and, and use your platforms, if you will, to speak up and speak against racism that you see going on in this world. I see some people doing it, but we need more. Yeah, absolutely, because when the tables turn, they're going to want us to be as strong, if not stronger, to back mm-hmm. for them, you know, and speak but up. But it also comes from also with us in our community coming together. Mm-hmm. I want to point out, you see how the gay people, they got their right, they came together while Obama was in office. It took some time, but you see how they came together, made noise constantly, and now they have their rights to marry whoever they want. That's what it's going to take for us coming together. Everybody has their own agendas within the the community, man. We just need to get on one accord, come together, and and come up with the master plan and stick to it and and do it just like how, you know, when I was in college, these two uh, gentlemen that I was in a uh, class, a business class with, they were both from uh, the same country but different city. If you will, they were in the same country but different time. But in any case, they were talking and then they found out they were in the same country and they linked up like that and they stood together. And by the time they graduated, they had their own business, was working on their own patent, and and had it already together, man. And the fact that they had just, it was just them two freshman year but by the time they graduate they had them a whole little squad mm-hmm. and if they ain't no telling where they at now i'm pretty sure they're doing very well but i just watched that and seen that man and how they just came together and asked myself why can't we do that man but that's also due to the racial hardship and separation yes, that we've been talking stemming back to slavery from you know the mulattoes and nottos i like to say when we had i have that in that book as well talking about that issue you know the colorism that also plays a part in our our division in our community as well and so if we can and and we have our own issues within our own community that we have to work on but in in general scope racism is is a is a community thing that we all need to work on but we have our issues that's another topic that we have to talk about that we have to work on that helps as well that's part of the problem too. Uh, us, we part of the problem. We can I can't say that we ain't. We are. When we don't come together and stick together. That's when they can tear us apart. Oh, I know. I experienced it. So, um, yeah. Even though you already gave it plug, I want you to give it again. Where can they find your book? Are you on Amazon or is it specifically on your website? I try to direct all traffic to my my website. So go to differenceworld.net. I also, every chance I get, I take the opportunity to advocate, again, for mental health wellness. Anybody out there listening, it might save their life. So, again, remember, it is okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go talk with a therapist, a family member, a friend, or, or picking up a hobby, or go cutting off those people that mean you know well. Go mend those broken bridges. Go do what you have to do to get your mental health in check and free yourself from that mental bondage. Because remember, whatever you went through, whatever you're going through, it may or may not be your fault. It may or may not be in your control. But as an adult, as a person being sound, body, and mind, it's your problem to deal with. You can't expect nobody else to come and mend your broken heart or whoever hurt you in the past. They've moved on to their next victim. So it's on you to take back your power and free yourself from that mental bondage. Anybody out there that's feeling, you know, depressed, dealing with suicidal thoughts or know somebody that does, or even dealing with bully, bullying, please give them this number, 1-800-273-8255, or they can text 741-741 or go to mentalhealthishealth.us.com. If anybody listening on the out, and outside the U.S., you can go to ncounseling.com. It gives a directory for all countries. Um uh, crisis hotline website and phone number. So it's spelled E N C O U N S C L I N G dot com. Again, in counseling dot com. Uh, so again, remember, it's okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. So with that part on the mental health, <laughs> like I said, I like to educate you guys. So uh, that's that, and keeping your mental health in check. Uh, also, with our model here at Third Eye, is manifest, plan, and prepare. Like I said, we manifest. You got to remove all the doubt, all the fear, and replace it with faith, 
speaking it into existence. And once you get it in your heart and in your mind, what you want to achieve, you get it out on paper, you plan for it, you write it out and how you're going to achieve this goal, have a backup plan, have an exit plan, you know, can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it's coming and know that with trials and tribulations, you will get through it. It too, it will pass. And so don't give in and keep going. As far as preparation goes, going back to what I was talking about, making sure uh, as far as when I say prepare, you, you, you prepare from the inside out. You get your house in order. Go prepare financially. Go prepare physically, spiritually, emotionally. Uh, like I said, go cut those people off who mean you know well. Go mend those broken bridges. Go get your heart, your mind, everything in check. So whenever you're manifesting, planning, and preparing, whatever it comes for to you, you can be prepared for it. You will know how to deal with it. You won't squander it or just let it go to waste like how I used to do in the past. And and I don't talk too much, so I just want to end it on that, you guys. And remember, um, either only come up playing like Cardi B or they come back like Robert E. There is no more in between. So manifest, plan, and prepare for what it is that you want in life, and it will surely come to you guys. Difference will come and learn. I love that. So before we exit out, I wanted to take the time to spell the website correctly because it's spelled yes, differently. Ma'am. But it's, um, it's yes. www.difernts.world.net. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I also take this time to to thank you for the opportunity, Don, for having me on the show. I truly appreciate it. You're a queen and you rocking your crown and hit oh so well. Don't you ever forget it. Oh, thank you so much. And I thank you so much for coming on, girl. I really do. Yeah, so yeah, happy to be here. Can't wait to come back. You said you're gonna let me come back. Of course. <laughs> look, whenever you look, whenever you book an appointment, we can do it, honey, because you like talking and I love it. It's hard to find people who like talking. <laughs> If, Sorry. If, if you can out talk me, oh yeah, you gotta come on as a co host. We're gonna have you as a guest on the morning show. I love it. I love it. I love it. Cause look, if I can sit there like mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, I love it. I love it. Okay. So okay. So anybody listening, everybody listening, don't forget, um, we have daily episodes dedicated to senior for take technology for seniors every day 12 p.m weekly episodes with the morning crew on monday the 6 a.m and thursdays 4 p.m is entrepreneurs we are on apple spotify radio and many of your major broadcasting channels we are always looking for guest reported comments and people interested in collaboration all those links and more can be found Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview I did with the lovely Dawn from the Research Shows podcast. Be sure to show her some love, you guys, and check out her her podcast on Anchor. The link is in my bio, so definitely click on it and, and show her some love and give her some clout. Uh, and, and make sure you guys follow her on all her platforms and social media, media handles that she's at. Uh, big shout out to her for having me once again as you guys uh, listen to as you guys see we talked about so many things you know from my childhood and upbringing uh, through you know mental health and mental health awareness as well as talking about chakra healing and, and as well as my book what if a controversial paradigm shift with that being said let's go ahead and get it started right here you guys here it is my book da, 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 da. what if a controversial paradigm shift is what we talked about mainly you know a book that's written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America and it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations and so be advised that it does come with the uh, sensories for intended for a mature audience only. So as I always say, if you can't take the heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. But yes, so as you guys listen to the audio interview, this is definitely what we mainly talked about being around Juneteenth uh, and talking about the book, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And, you know, the homage that I pay to so many people, or black people, if you will, that came before me. Said a uh, big shout out to her again for having me. Uh, and moving on, uh, let's talk about some other things we got going on in Difference World. What we got coming up, uh, have, what other blogs that I got dropping? I just dropped my Jamaica vlog, finally, you guys, my travel vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, as well as my signs from the other side uh, from the deceased loved ones. I hope you, I pr- truly appreciate all the love I'm getting from that interviews. You know, it, it's going up, man. I just started this a year ago, and slowly but surely, you know, 
I don't expect for it to happen overnight. You know, of course, it's going to take hard work and consistency. And so just like everybody else that's out there trying to get it, I'm on that come up, you know, like Cardi B. And then even if you are one of those that's like Robert D that's trying to have that comeback, you, there is no more in between. So make sure you either or. And so, um, again, uh, to be on the lookout for my new vlogs that I got coming. Uh, what is it that I got dropping uh, after this one? I'll drop another travel vlog. I'm trying to figure out which one do I want to do. Uh, either uh, Egypt or Dubai. Oh, what do I? I just did an island one, so I either be somewhere in the desert. Um, so either that, either one of those, I'll, I'll be dropping next. So be on the lookout for my travel vlog, as well as. Um, there is one vlog that I, I want to drop that I've been waiting on or, or going back and forth on, but having these audio interviews and talking about, you know, this issue even after the interview is over with, um, foster care. <laughs> yeah, and so for those who, who don't really listen to my interviews or have not really delved into my backstory yet, um, I spent four years in foster care and actually aged out of foster care. And so I want to title my next vlog, I'm thinking of titling it, uh, Confessions of a Former Foster Kid. And so be on the lookout with that. I'm trying to make sure, you know, I come correct with it as, as best as I can because, again, even though this is a different world, you know, I say what I want, I do what I want, I am aware of what I say and what I put out, and I don't want to, you know, intentionally offend people or speak on something or say something that's uneducated so I try to always make sure not forcing so tread lightly but you know making sure you know I I, uh, I dot my eyes and cross my T's as much as I can if you will if that makes more sense so um, yeah and then the reason being uh, this this came about is from the conversations that I had you know with all of the interviewers and you know, some of them you know they asked me afterwards you know wow what was it really like for you being in foster care and you know me sharing you know some stories with them it, it kind of brought me to you know sharing with you all you know some of the truth that actually you know go on behind you know the system and seems and you hear those rumors of what happens when you know a kid ends up in foster care um, and so I do want to talk about that and, and share that with you all, but I also, like I said, want to, want to tread carefully and making sure, you know, I don't, you know, offend anybody. So I'll, I'll definitely make sure I put like a little warning uh, content on it, if you will. So, <laughs> with that also being said, you guys, um, I'm trying to make sure I keep smiling and, and, and honestly where my, I'm at right now with my mental health. Um, today makes eight months since my mother has passed, and so... I'm um, trying to keep busy and making sure, you know, I don't start getting, thinking on, you know, negative thoughts and, and getting depressed and start crying. Um, I want to stay active and stay focused. And so one of the re ways that I can do that is making, you know, these little deep vlog channels and sharing with you all. And so uh, transitioning to another topic, you guys, uh, mental health, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second and making sure, you know, you guys are keeping your mental health in check as well. You know, this is a part of my regimen or my little plan of action, you know, making sure I don't go off the deep end. So I hope you guys are doing the same. It doesn't have to be this or, you know, whatever, you know, tickles your fan fancy, whatever works best for you, do it. Make sure you're keeping your mental health in check. If you know or if you need it yourself, please, you know, share this information or, or use these resources. If you need the crisis hotline number, you can dial 1-800-273-8255 or you can go to mentalhealthishealth.us or <laughs> you can text 741741 or if you're living outside of the U.S. you can go to ncounseling.com again that's spelled E-N-C-O-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com I always leave that information in my description so be sure to check that out if you need it and also just again getting online and doing whatever it is that you need to do your own research and find what works best for you uh, again, remember, it is okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. I, I, I say that to you guys, and I'm also trying to practice what I preach, so that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> and so also, with that being said, I want to say, you know, rest in peace to my mother, Rochelle Raynette Schoenevert. I know she's up above watching over me. She's been sending me signs all day, you know, letting me know she's all right, and it's all right, and, and I'm going to be all right. And so... 
um, to keep and I'm going to keep pushing and keep going like my mama told me to do and so again rest in peace to my queen my mother uh, and, uh, and one day I will see her again but, but hopefully not too soon <laughs> if you mean. and so um, moving on with that you guys and, and close out of this vlog again don't forget I, I hope you guys enjoy listening to my audio interview don't forget to like, share, comment, or subscribe. No, and subscribe. Scratch that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, you guys. I do appreciate it, you know, when you guys are, you know, showing me love and hitting that button. So definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share the videos. Comment. You know, interact with me. I definitely will interact with you guys as well. And so, again, thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Again, be sure to make sure you guys are keeping your mental health in check, just like me. Uh, and we're all in this together. You guys are not alone, and I know I'm not alone. And so with that being said, whatever it is in life that you're believing that you're, you're destined for and it's meant for you, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Different world. Well, come and learn. Peace. <laughs> Bye, y'all. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.